All right, today I'm doing a little diff, something a little bit different. Um, shooting on a, my crappy little Samsung instead of an iPhone, which I usually use because my girlfriend's not here and it's her phone. But um, it doesn't look too bad. But this thing's battery is horrible, so I'll try to get through this before it dies. <clears throat> anyway, today I'm covering Jesse Jacobs. <clears throat> uh, he. I don't have too much time, and he's an artist that really doesn't have a large um, output or bibliography so far. Right, he's relatively new. Um, I mean, he's been doing it for at least you know ten plus years. So, but in con in cartoonists, that's pretty new. <clears throat> anyway, so he had one previous book that I can't seem to get called um, Shoot. Something, the Giants, oh man, how am I blanking on it? Anyway, it was put out by Ad House, and it's, it's super out of print and rare. <clears throat> this is also kind of out of print and rare, but I got super lucky and found this at my local shop for the cover price a couple months ago. I don't know, they must have just had it since it came out. They sell everything at cover price, so sometimes you can find some gems. <clears throat> if you can find this for less than like 80 bucks, buy it. So, <clears throat> this is like, I guess his second, second um, book. And <clears throat> it, it's pretty much setting up the theme that follows through in all his work. This like man versus nature. Um... <clears throat> Thing. and like kind of like how man manipulates nature and nature manipulates man and it's very violent although it looks cute this stuff is pretty disturbing and when you first when I first saw his art at least you kind of think like how could this I <laughs> this not maybe not this book but um, stuff like crawl space you look at pictures of it and you're just like, how? You, I was worried that it wasn't going to be, uh, there wasn't going to be any narrative. And it was just going to be like, just insane visuals. Art, art comics, you know? But no, this stuff delivers. It's fun to read. It's fucking full of high concepts, incredible psychedelic art. <clears throat> He always uses a particular, like very particular color schemes too. So like each book is usually two or three colors that just work as like a motive. He's a really interesting cartoonist in that he's just so formulaic in his own style. This is some insane stuff. I can't really explain this story too well, but I can try to get into the other ones a little bit better. <clears throat> it's a little bit um, convoluted and esoteric, but it's about gods and, like I was saying before, human humans' in interaction with their environment and nature. His next book is a huge. It's a statement, basically, on on that <clears throat> called Safari Honeymoon, and this was put out. These were all put out by uh, Kayoma Press, which is now shut down. So, I guess his new twoest books or his new uh, two books have come out from Hollow Press, and I'm not sure if he's strictly working with them or maybe. <clears throat> I could see him doing Drawn and Quarterly for some reason. I think he might have some affiliation with them. Anyway, this one really is a huge statement on, um, you know, colonialism and encroach, encroaching on nature, man encroaching on nature. It's about this couple that goes on a honeymoon retreat to this um, kind of absurdist uh, natural kingdom 
and they have this guide that's walking them through it and they're basically hunting these inc incredible creatures that uh, turn out turn out to be quite violent and um, dangerous actually and <laughs> the the guide he uh, I don't want to give away too much but the guide and the the wife have a little thing going <clears throat> she's kind of she's uh really interested in the nature and she doesn't want to hunt it but the husband like she 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 finds this little guy off by himself and starts feeding him and it causes some horrible chaos and they have to kill it and see it looks cute as fuck right but this stuff really it, it's it's depressing and dark each one in its own way <clears throat> very conceptual guy I mean he doesn't shy away from high concept at all and he can really ex express these concepts in his art which most people don't understand don't know how to do pure cartooning very like, he definitely has like an Escher thing going on inspired by like the impossible geometry and almost uh, optical illusions or something but yeah you see the simple color scheme I mean it's literally just one color these books are beautiful they're really nicely printed it almost feels like risograph I'm not sure what his process is, if it's digital at all, or it must be, because it's so, so perfect, I mean, you literally don't see, it's so symmetrical, and you don't see any, like, screw-ups or anything, you don't see any goofs, spoofs, oofs, this is, so this book and the last one are super easy to get, you can get them super cheap on eBay or whatever, Amazon if you're into that they always fucking damage my books on top of the horrible shit they do so I pretty much gave up on them for this I mean I cut it off it's not good anyway see I saw this is the first book I got and I'd seen pictures for a long time on online very psychedelic this is this is pretty similar <clears throat> um, in concept kind of basically this rainbow world <clears throat> it's like an alternate dimension that this these kids find and it's inside a washing machine and this is the perfect example of how he how Jacobs uses his coloring to to paint concepts and to put put like push things home <clears throat> so like this is them back in the real world and so the two friends one of them's new to town basically she's the new girl and she wants to fit in and so she like lets all these people come in to her house and, and check out this weird world and it she she instant she uh increasingly becomes more alienated and just like stays in there and gets lost essentially and her friend has to go in and save her or so it, yeah maybe i might have it the other the wrong way around but one of them has to go and save the other one from she's like totally absorbed into the this like rainbow world but it is also another one that's about how these humans are interacting with their environment and like how it can like psychologically warp them how they can how they're 
like how it basically like owning parts of it or violent tourism like going to hunt stuff or like torturing these little animals or going in there just to it's kind of almost about cultural appropriation colonialism <clears throat> you could read it in a lot of different ways but it has a lot to do with like I'm not sure if he's a vegetarian or anything but it feels like it has a lot to do with animal rights like using these other creatures for your entertainment This is obviously one of his most visually appealing and exciting works. <clears throat> Just in terms of color. Usually he doesn't have this much going on. And you'll see in his two newest books, there's like almost no color. I mean, he's he's really engaging in this like black and white thing. This. Great end papers. Damn, rest in peace, Koyama Press. It's gonna be harder and harder to get these. I mean, if, unless he moves to like Fantagraphics or Drawn and Quarterly, it's gonna be a pain in the ass. I mean, they're just gonna be putting out these like limited releases and shit. I don't know. I love Hollow Press, but it's just a pain in the ass to order from fucking Italy or have to pay super extra from floating world I'm not <clears throat> I don't know no offense of course so this is a little zine that came out from Koyama uh, this thing's not focusing right but yeah Jesse Jacobs and James Kilpatrick and it's pretty much the right the usual fare from from Jesse Jacobs, but then you have these like more weird paper rad esque images that are less like coherent and more just blah, 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 weird deforgian. And this, yes, this is like a tiny little zine, but it's kind of rare. I don't know if you can actually find this anywhere for sale. I got mine from uh, Butter Pop, so might be worth checking them. They have awesome, really insane selection of like rare, out of print, rare, you know, uh, small press, limited edition scenes. Can't really explain what this is about because there's not too much really going on in there. It's kind of just like, uh, and oh yeah, I'll show this little guy. McSweeney's 51, um, and they had Jesse Jacobs do the cover and end papers. Pretty dope. This thing is mostly all writing, so it's just short stories and interviews and stuff, if you're familiar with McSweeney's. <coughs> They've put out a couple comic issues, one one of them famously edited by Chris Ware. And I think the other one has Jesse Jacobs in it too, I just, stuff that I already have. And there is actually some of the, I meant to say earlier, the first, when I was talking about the first book he did, um, something about the Giants, fuck, I can't remember the name. You Part of it is excerpted in, <clears throat> I think, the 2012 issue of Best American Comics, so you can read part of it, and that's the Francois Moulet edition. <clears throat> so yeah, I don't have that, I just gifted my copy to someone, because they are not really into comics, and figured I'd hook them up. And now, this is uh, one of his newest things from Hollow Press. this came out I think 2018, or 2017 potentially maybe even just last year and it's another story it's about about humanity in this desolate weird absurd universe 
this time being a baby and the baby being raised by these like psychedelic wolf aliens and what appears to be another planet they appear to be on another planet um don't want to ruin the story too much but eventually you realize this why this baby is here it must have been abandoned by by accident or lost by a previous space fleet but it's written from the point of view of this baby having grown up and how he hates these he hated being around these creatures and he pities them and just finds them pathetic essentially One of his more simple works that <clears throat> it's just a it's kind of a depressing read I'll say um, I think it's shorter leaning towards like 40 pages compared to all his works are short and similarly paced they all are short but I think this is the shortest one this one's actually, this next one's I think it might be actually a similar size but this is his newest book from hollow press they live in me and it is a little bit different and it's in it not being about nature per, per, like per se <clears throat> but it's been printed a few times this is the fourth printing but very small editions 150 copies I think they might still have copies of this got a Noah Van Skyver introduction and hollow press is a uh, I'll have to do an episode on them, because I have a lot of different opinions about them. I love them, hate them. No, I don't hate them at all. I, I love them, but they definitely have some issues in terms of, like, I don't know, translating and stuff. I hear that, I talked to them recently, and they said they're actually working with a really well-established translator and English researcher, so... I don't want to say their name because I'm not sure they've announced it yet, but that is going to be, it's going to be so much better. Because if you've read some of their books, you'll, you'll realize that weren't written in English, they're translated. Um, you'll realize that like, man, there's some issues going on. I'll do a whole episode on that later. I don't have much time. In fact, my next episode is supposed to be about Josh Simmons, but I just didn't have enough time to cover all his stuff today and it's hot as fuck so this story sorry i'm getting into some silliness the story all right that's why i don't use this phone it's fucking overheated anyway so this book is actually they live in me is about these houses that are alive and basically introduced by this uh, real estate agent to a new couple he has a thing with these new couples I don't know um, so <laughs> they're, sh he's, they're just showing them around this house that's like alive and it's shifting around them no explanation they don't ask any questions about this they're just accepting of the whole thing this is like pretty unique um, looking for his stuff it, it's all like that that line that wavy line he's a master of but then so simplified compared to anything else he's done by far <clears throat> I have a buddy who said this is his favorite work but this did not resonate with me as well as like anything else that he's done I mean it was fun some really cool images like he's really good at drawing these warping things things changing he, ob obviously he would be like an ideal animator he has something in line with that <clears throat> imagine this stuff animated perhaps one day I mean I don't want to lose him from comics because this shit's amazing, I mean, I don't think he puts out enough, and 
I'm sure this shit takes a lot of work, and he's actually pretty prolific putting out shit like this every couple years. I mean, I've never put out one, so... This is a really cool sequence of the uh, room shifting. <clears throat> yeah, I think um, in terms of like cartoonists, I, I put him in the same world of um, skill and themes as, as Michael DeForge. Although I think he's way more direct and focused than DeForge, like he knows what he wants to make, and he, maybe not that he knows what he wants to make, but he, uh, he's just so methodical, and his stories are really all, feel like they're a continuation of the same universe almost, where they, they all have the same themes, they have like this, this cohesive art style that all, you can tell his art, it's his art instantly. Um, so, <clears throat> the next thing I wanted to talk about is freaking, ah, sorry, I think I forgot one of the books inside. So the next thing I was going to talk about was the game. He just put out a game that's coming out, that actually just came out today, and it's available for Switch, um, and stream, so let me get into that. So yeah, sorry about that. I just wanted to show one last thing. I, I knew there was something I was forgetting. I think there's probably even more that I'm forgetting, but he did a pinup in the uh, first, first all-time comics collection. I think this might be in one of the, the actual comics as well, but I'm not sure which issue. Red Maniac, it's the best. So yeah, yeah. The next thing is his game. It's called Spinch, by the way. And I am definitely I'm about to, I have a Switch, so I'm about to get it today. But I was kind of waiting cuz my buddy's about to trade me his uh his his full Switch for my my little puny what's it called? The the new one, the little one. It's just it's all just portable. You can't plug it in the TV. Switch light or whatever. So we're about to trade it, because I want to play this shit on the full screen and see the the art. It's insane. So this, what this, if you don't, if you're not familiar with Bubbles, this is an amazing fanzine, um, comic fanzine put out by uh, a, a guy named Brian Baines in Richmond, Virginia. Um, he's previously known for doing a bunch of like punk zines, and he runs a theater up there. He's the manager of a theater. Uh, the Grace Theater, and awesome guy, really. This is pretty much like it's like the uh, the comics journal of today. Although I will say that it's mostly like fanboy things. It's not. There's not much, you know, crazy criticism or any coming for the throat or anything like that. <clears throat> it's it's still totally worth reading because he's got his finger on the pulse of everything that's cool I mean he's like every issue it's basically what I'm reading and what I want it, he's, it's like he's following my fucking thoughts somehow so I was obsessed especially my not just me but my girlfriend she's been obsessed with this game since hearing about it months ago and I actually got her issue of this too, so she could read it. But yeah, this is an interview, and this wasn't actually conducted by Brian, which <clears throat> originally this was just his his thing. I think the first issue is him alone, but he started having uh, submissions and you know enlisting other people. So this is run a interview by J uh, James Bradshaw, <clears throat> and it's not too long, but. I'm sure there'll be more interviews coming out soon, but this is worth five bucks, and it's pretty, uh, gives you a lot of context into the game that I really wanted to know. Obviously, now that it's out, we can 
we're gonna have some interviews that get far deeper into the context, but I figured it'd be worth showing you guys. Um, and that's it for today. I gotta go to work now, so it's hot as fuck. Anyway, if you like this video, please subscribe, like it, <clears throat> share it with a friend if they don't, you know, if they're into comics. Anyway, uh, appreciate you for watching, so take care.